Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Lily, and I'm so happy that you are here with me today. In today's video, we are going to alter some journaling cards. And these are cards that I pulled out of my stash. These are old monthly journaling cards, and they are used for inserting in your pocket pocket journaling or pocket documenting. And so I've had these for quite a while. I am shopping my stash and going through all of my supplies and just trying to find items that I could use. I've also already pre-cut and die cut some fall elements. And um, I did this a couple weeks ago where I wanted to start preparing all of my components and my elements for my junk journals. I'm currently working on three fall junk journals and I am currently working on fall ephemera and uh, I've actually just recently posted a whole bunch of videos about all of the fall ephemera that I am creating. This is an, an up close shot so you can see all of that detail that I have put into those die cut leaves and I'm going to show you how to take a simple die cut that is flat and has no character, no personality, and we are going to transform it and make it look like a real fall and crunchy leaf. So from, what do they call it? From drab to, I know there's a saying out there, but we're just going to beautify it. We're gonna make it nice and grungy, and I'm going to show you how we can embellish just a plain, simple die cut. This is the stash of old monthly journaling cards that I have been saving since 2015 and 2016. And I just didn't get around to using these. Now I love pocket journaling. I love, love, love it. And I've got collections from, from a lot of uh, different, different makers. For example, these are from Studio Calico. I had subscribed to them for quite a while when I was living in California. And then I also have collections from Becky Higgins with her Project Live cards, Heidi Swap, um, the Reset Girl. So just an, an array of, of pocket journaling cards. But these I kind of kept in their own little pouch because they are all month related. And as you could see, and I will point out how right in the center of a lot of these journaling cards, the year has been printed on it. And so most of these are from 2015 and 2016. So I had a really good idea on how to repurpose these. Now I held on to them for a long time because I honestly didn't know what I was going to do with them, but I didn't want to get rid of them. And that's just the ho hoarder in me. <laughs> I didn't want to get rid of them. I knew somewhere along the lines in the future, I was going to come across come across a great idea. And so I did I actually stumbled across an idea this morning by positioning that little die cut just right over the year. No one's ever going to know you guys. Don't tell anybody. No one's ever going to know that I glued a leaf over the year. Who's going to know? It'll be, it'll be our little secret here. <laughs> But hey, it is a great way to repurpose items that are dated. And I've talked about this before. I mentioned a few days ago that I don't want my stuff to get dated anymore. And this is what I'm talking about. Literally dated with a year on it. But by positioning your embellishment, your die cut, a gem, a sticker, whatever it is that you have, we're going to make it work and we're going to use these in the 2022 fall junk journals that I'm currently working on. If you've been following along these last few days, I have uploaded a series of videos about um, me creating fall junk journal ephemera. So this is just part of that series. I will have all of those videos linked down below. They are short videos, which is, which is not, um, um, not common for me. It is uncommon for me to do short videos, but I want to show you how quick and easy it is 
to create ephemera for your junk journals. And we're talking about DIY ephemera. Ephemera that we can build from scratch by repurposing materials that we currently have. This is my little um, paper scrap container. These are all offcuts and paper scraps from the scrapbooking papers that I have actually used in the fall junk journals. And I like to contain all of the papers from that specific junk journals so I can pull from it and create the ephemera so that everything is cohesive. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. Now I'm going to back up this card. The back of the card, even though it has very useful information, this is really cool. It, it gives you like a color theory, colors that you can use um, in conjunction with one another. And so I almost didn't cover it up because I thought we, you know, even if I kept these journaling cards in the journal as it was, it would provide um, really good information. But then I thought, oh, let's just, let's just keep embellishing and cover it up. I've got the scrap paper to do so. So I'm using my tape runner to back up or to, yeah, to add the scrapbooking paper as a backing. Now I was careful not to apply glue runner on the edges because I am going to take this journaling card to the sewing machine. I did it with the others and you can clearly see that I didn't even cut the strings. I'm going to leave the strings as it is. I like the look of those dangly strings. It kind of gives it a more homemade feel, homemade look. And so that's what we're going to do. Now I'm just going to trim the excess all the way around. But what a great idea to repurpose. So if you have items that you've been holding on to, maybe you have similar items like this that have a year and there it's a it's a good product, it's a good item, but you just don't know how to repurpose. Well, here you go. This is a great way to reuse those dated items. So, and all of this, it really did just, just happen by coincidence that the other day I mentioned I didn't want to use dated items and then today I came across literal dated items. <laughs> but you know what? I'm having a really good time preparing all of this fall ephemera, you guys. I... Um, I made a list of the things that I wanted to create and I'm kind of going down that list. For example, Rolodex cards, journaling tags, um, journaling cards and things like that. But as I have been creating, I've been inspired to create even more ideas. And so I quickly make a note of it so that I don't forget. It's like you, you get into this groove where you find inspiration from the projects that you are currently working on and then the ideas just grow so make sure that once you have an idea just grab yourself a pen and paper and just jot down all of your ideas and even draw out do a little illustration so that when you read your list you've kind of drawn um, your own little rendering of what you want your or how you plan on executing that idea so just a few tips on, on doing that. that's what I do and um, just thought I'd pass that along did you notice how I saved the little scraps of paper the excess paper <laughs> because I also plan on making some clusters with all of those little strips and so those are not going to waste they go back into the bin and I will reuse them so I am Distressing. I'm using vintage photo to distress all around the journaling card. And I, I have been using this vintage photo for everything. And in fact, I really need to re-ink it because I have just, I've used it on everything that I have made um, these last few days. And I will continue to use it. It actually lives on my desk. I never even put it away. It's one of my go-to products. So we just need to keep it um, refilled so that it doesn't, it doesn't dry out. So now I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and I am using a gold thread. It's the front is gold and then the rear is black. I love the glimmer of the gold thread. It is beautiful and it's a nice little detail. And then the back, you can see it, it's kind of grungy and, <laughs> and all wonky. I do that on purpose. Not that I could stitch straight or anything, 
it, but it's not my intention or my idea to stitch straight lines. So I just run it through the machine and the wonkier, the better. And my zigzags are also nice and wonky. And so I just like that look. So here I am pulling some of those die cuts. These are from a Tim Holtz die. And so I just die cut a whole bunch of them. So I'm going to, I'm just going to use two on the face of the cards. And you could see how I've used plain scrapbooking paper. There's no embossing on it. There is no pattern. It's just plain orange and green scrapbooking paper, nothing to it. Now you could also use it like this. You don't have to alter, but why not? Let's take something that looks plain and make it look grungy and, and tattered. So that's what we are going to do. And here is my um, cellophane bag. I've also been using this uh, packaging cellophane bag to, to create a little puddle of vintage photo. And I'm just going to dip the die cuts right into that little puddle of vintage photo ink that I've watered down with a little bit of, of water. And just to give it a little bit of dimension and a little bit of color. I've been using this cellophane bag um, to distress most of the ephemera that I have been working on. And I just keep it on my desk. The ink will eventually dry up, but once I spritz it with a little bit of water, it just comes back to life. And I prefer this than actually using the mat that, um, that, I, that you can see underneath that's actually on my table because I can reuse that little cellophane bag and I can easily lift it from the desk and set it aside where I'm not constantly cleaning my tabletop. These don't take very long to dry, for, but for the purpose of the video, I just grabbed my heat tool and I am just giving it a quick, a quick dry. They look great as they are right now with all of that discoloration, but I'm gonna go around and I'm going to distress the edges just to kind of emphasize the outer edges of the die cut. And you can see, you can begin to see the transformation. And um, it might be, for some, it might be something that is a little uh, tedious, but after all, we do, we do, we are here to create, we are here to make things. And believe me, it is worth the effort. All of those, all of those little details are appreciated. Now I'm going to take it one step further and I'm going to create, I was pointing out to the veining that is in the leaves and these are pretty delicate. They are small and I used thin papers. These are thin uh, cardstock or thin uh, scrapbooking papers. I'm going to fold it where there would be a natural veining and I'm just going to distress it with my distress tool, a little bit of ink and unfold it to give it the look of natural veining on that leaf. Or sometimes as you're walking on trails and you see the fallen leaves on the ground, sometimes when they fall, they fall over and they fold and they dry that way. And that is, that, this is the idea. This is what I'm mimicking is those full, I just love it. I just, I just love it. <laughs> and this I did, um, I created by accident. It was an accident, you guys. So I did one, I accidentally folded one as I was um, distressing it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it looks like real veining. So let's continue with that. I think some of the best ideas come from happy accidents. And right there, I'm just doing a side-by-side -side comparison. You could use it in its original form, or you could keep embellishing. These are three different, three steps. So the first, you could leave it as it is when you dipped it into the little pool of vintage photo. That's one. Or two, you can just... Um, take your distress uh, tool and ink it all around the edges. That is number two. And number three, you can further ink it by folding it and highlighting some of those other areas in the leaf. So 
There are so many different steps and you can stop and go as far as you want. But I really like the way these turned out. They look like a real leaf, you guys. <laughs> it's so cool. It looks crunchy. It looks like if I handle it too much, it's just going to fall apart. And I'm sure you've handled uh, fall leaves that have gone dry and they, just, they become very brittle. That's what these look like. Oh my gosh, they are so cute. I love it. Love it. So super quick and easy. This is, this video is almost in real time. All I did is edit out the one minute it took me to stitch around the card. So it doesn't take very long to create, to create these journaling cards. As long as you prepare and you sort out all of your components and almost work in assembly line form, you put everything out right in front of you and you just grab and go. And that makes the process so much easier having everything within arm's reach instead of going through um, your supplies one at a time. So this just works. It works. It works well for me. And I, I hope that some of these ideas you find useful and you also gain inspiration from, from my projects. So do you see how it's like the leaf just fell and landed on October? <laughs> Oh my gosh, it is so cute. What a great way to repurpose these journaling cards. Just love them. And did you see how I had all the other months too? So I'll find new and creative ways to use the other ones. For example, there's January and April and July. So you'll see. You'll see them in the, in the near future. I'll have to kind of brainstorm to see what I can do. These leaves almost look as though they are blowing in the wind right over October. So I will include one of these cards in each of the junk journals. I am almost done in preparing all of the ephemera. So then I will just start sprinkling it in the three fall junk journals. And hopefully, fingers crossed, I will have it finished um, in the next few days, maybe by the weekend, and do a flip through for you. But look at how nice those are. That is the November card. I had to, I happen to have two November cards, which is great. That leaf in the upper right hand corner. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. And that's the September card. These blew my mind, you guys. I am on a roll. I've got so many ideas and just not enough time. I need more hours in the day. You guys, I kid you not. I create every free minute I have. Every free minute. And if not, I'm writing down ideas. <laughs> you guys, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate you so much. Hope you are inspired to create. And I will see you next time. Bye.